We find Rocky after the victory. He's naked and alone in a shower, trembling and afraid. And he calls for his wife. And when she walks in, he's shaking and trembling in a way that he can barely speak, but he tries to tell her a story about his old trainer. And he's shaking so hard that he says to Mick used to say when he was fighting that he would fight so hard that something would break inside him and then he would die. And that's when the angels would come pulling on him. And then he goes on to say, I just want to go home. I think this is the perfect analogy for what's wrong with our masculinity in our society today because it has been fighting so hard, something has broken inside. And it hinges on a set of rules that are being written and rewritten in a way that has no understanding for what the future may hold. It has become this volatile, unstable condition that leads so many to self-destruction. Growing up, I was always bigger, faster, and stronger than most of my peers. And it was expected of me to do something like lift weights, play football, become a wrestler, maybe end up being a construction worker, and dig in ditches. But why? This question formed the basis for my artistic practice when I left football culture. And during my career as a contemporary artist, I've reflected on my own traditional masculinity and my experience playing football to create work that represents the explosive nature of this identity. And what I realized that I was interested in capturing the moment that masculinity fails you know I never was comfortable with jock mentality or the atmosphere of locker room culture instead I escaped into my own world becoming fascinated by how masculinity manifests itself in our society. See, traditional masculinity operates on the ability to perform physically. And this physical performance can take a display of will, aggression, strength, and how well an individual performs those tasks is how they're valued accordingly. It creates a nothing-is-ever-good-enough situation for masculinity to exist because self-worth operates on a subjective plane that is constantly changing according to the physical state of the individual. This is called conditional self-worth. I think about conditional self-worth in terms of football. Because we can have a player who's bigger and stronger and faster than everybody else and they can hurl their body into space in a way that brings wealth, acclaim, all to support their masculine identity. But then one day, the player is injured in such a manner that ability to perform is taken away. We've seen it before on TV. The player lies there on the field after the play, and they cut to commercial. And then when we see them, again, they're being carted off as the announcers send out their thoughts and prayers. Like so many young boys in the 1980s, I grew up loving the Rocky movies. And those of you that are unfamiliar with the Rocky story, Rocky's a down-on-his-luck boxer on the streets of Philadelphia during the mid-1970s when he's offered the opportunity to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world a publicity stunt 
to allow the current champion to remain champion. This backfires on the champion, and he almost loses to this unknown opponent. I remember as a kid being baffled by the fact that Rocky lost the fight. I think it was the first time I saw it, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This dude did all this stuff for two and a half hours, and he still lost the fight? It wasn't until I was older and making art that I realized that deep down inside, I loved it when Rocky lost. Because the Rocky saga mimics traditional masculinity perfectly. It wasn't enough for Rocky just to compete. And although he's severely injured, he must provide for his family in the only way he knows how. Fight. He has to immediately re-engage his own self-worth that traps him and leads to his self-destruction by the end of the film series. See, Rocky's masculinity could never stabilize itself because he always had to fight to exist. But what happens when Rocky can't fight anymore? What happens when a player can't play anymore? Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles tendon late in his career. And he spent most, most, most of the season watching from the stands while he tweeted out all the mistakes that he thought his coach and his former players were making. After one of the games, the coach responded by saying, Kobe is just a fan now, not an actual player, and should be happy just to cheer us on like everybody else. This was a game-changing statement to my ideas about masculinity and the art that I was trying to produce. What I realized, when an injury occurs, a massive psychological void opens up in the individual. They are saturated with anger, frustration, fear, and depression, all in the moment this happens. And they immerse themselves in anything that they can find, trying to escape from not being the person they feel they should be. In my art, I imagine them as occupying a transitional state between masculine and feminine, walking around, roaming in a trance caused by all the chaos around them. Much of what I do as an artist in the studio directly relates to the idea of conditional self-worth because I depend on my physical size and strength to move, stack, break, and create things within a confined space much like an athlete does. And although I felt like I withdrew from a destructive masculine culture years ago and saved myself from this massive psychological void, I am now faced with the fact that I still may have injured myself in a way that's irreversible. I recently read a study that stated that 91% of college football players' brains that have been studied suffer from CTE. CTE stands for chronic traumatic encephalitis. It's a progressive degenerative brain disease caused by repetitive brain trauma found in athletes like football players. Now keep in mind, to be diagnosed with CTE and have your brain studied, you must be dead first. But while you're alive, the symptoms associated with this disease include aggression, memory loss, substance abuse, depression, anxiety, suicide, and eventual progressive dementia. Right now, I don't have any symptoms that would be considered serious, but I can tell you that massive psychological void I spoke of a minute ago is quickly opening up for me. And this disease that I may or may not have could end up causing me to not to be able to perform physically as an artist which in turn will affect my own identity. What I think is happening is the past feats and physical mistakes of others are starting to swallow up masculinity altogether. Maybe it's because masculinity is moving to a more contemporary version of what it should be in our society because this structure of nothing is ever good enough is changing in a way that creates a positive experience. Maybe it'll destroy the masculine male altogether. 
Either way, we've got to understand why we value masculinity. What purpose does it serve us as individuals as well as a society? Do we need it? Or is it just an outdated version of existing that should be reserved for entertainment purposes only? I don't have the answers to these questions, and I don't know what that future looks like. Either way, I've got to figure out how my weakening system of conditional self-worth will sustain my identity by coming to terms with the fact that it probably will never sustain someone else's. And in the end, I may not be able to create art in the same way I have in the past. And although terrifying as it may be to consider the reality of that, it does offer a fresh new perspective both on myself, my work, and how I exist in the world. Back to Rocky. Most people like to think about Rocky at the end of the movies. I like to think about him at the beginning of the movies, after the victory, when we find him naked in the shower, alone, terrified, and trembling. This is how I see masculinity in our society today. This is how I see my masculinity. After the victory, in the shower, alone and naked, terrified and trembling, just wanting to go home. But I have no idea where home is. Thank you very much.